Hello, welcome back to my channel. My name is Kat and today I am doing my November TBR. So this includes my Indigathon TBR, my mini burst for recommendations for Scorpios, and a buddy read with one of my Australian friends. So without further ado, we're gonna go ahead and get into it with my Indigathon TBR first. Indigathon is hosted by Brody at et to Brody and Michelle from Thor Wants Another Letter. It is a month-long November readathon. Uh, there is a bingo board, I will put it here, and I am going to try and tick off all of the boxes without overlapping. So first up, a uh, buddy read. So for this, I am reading two different books with two different people. So the first one I wanna talk about is Moon of the Crusted Snow. I am reading this with Sion from Past Story Time, and I have wanted to read this for a very long time. So this is by Wabgeshig Rice, who is a Canadian author and also from the Wasakskling First Nation. So this originally caught my attention because it is a post-apocalyptic novel where I think things have gone very wrong in the world. and. The people in this Ashinabe community um, are actually doing pretty well because they're very self-sufficient. However, outsiders are going to come and try to steal their resources. So I have wanted to read this for a very long time and it's the perfect opportunity and I hope that Sion and I like it uh, as much as I think I will. So next up is a read with Alicia from Alicia Reads. This is Empire of Wild by Sherry Dimeline, who is a member of the Georgia Bay Metis community. Joan is brokenhearted because her husband has gone missing and over the years uh, she doesn't know what happened to him and then suddenly she runs into him and he doesn't remember her at all and he is proselytizing. So she gets the help from some of her friends and they're trying to figure out what happened to him. Uh, and his name also happens to be Victor. And every time I hear Victor, I just think Frankenstein. It has nothing to do with it at all. But yeah, I'm, I'm hesitant about this one. I think it could go either way. I think it could be quirky, dark, and weird, which would be fabulous. Or it could be kind of messy, which would be not so fabulous. So the next prompt is intersectionality. And for this, I'm going to finish Johnny Appleseed by Joshua Whitehead, who is an OG Cree two-spirit storyteller and academic. I read half of this already. It was for a video, which I ended up not filming for various reasons. So I got halfway through, put it down to finish other books, and I just never picked it back up, which was a complete shame because I really, really enjoyed what I read. So I want to finish this one for the intersectionality challenge. So next up is to read a book other than set in the USA. And for this, I'm going to read Firefront, uh, First Nations Poetry and Power Today, edited by Alison Whitaker. So I live in Australia and I feel like it's important to read Australian uh, First Nations works as well. And this is a poetry collection which is rated very highly. And I saw it at my library and was very, very excited about it. Next up is Other Than 5CT, which is Other Than the Five Civilized Tribes. And for this one, I'm just going to read another Australian one because that is Other Than the Five Civilized Tribes. Um, this is Catching Teller Crow by Ambelin Koimalini. Melina and Ezekiel Quay Melina. And this one has a different name anywhere other than Australia. Um, I'll put the other name down below. But basically, this is following a young girl named Beth Teller who has died. She's been murdered. And she is trying to haunt her father and tell him what happened because he is a detective. So she is trying to help him solve her murder. This is giving me reminders of The Lovely Bones, if you've ever read that. Um, but I think it just sounds really fascinating and I really love this cover and I really like the title. Um, yeah, so I cannot wait to read this. So next up is to read an author who is new to you and for this I'm going to read Louise Erdrich, Erdrich, Erdrich? Um, and I have two, I couldn't decide. So this is Future Home of the Living God and this is La Rose. So this one is more... I guess on theme for Indigathon, this deals with a 
um, indigenous community where a man is out hunting and he accidentally shoots and kills um, someone else's child and in exchange he gives them his own child um, however I might be a little burned out on the hunting accidents because um, I'm currently um, reading The Only Good Indians so I'm not sure and this one I have had my eye on for a very very long time and this one is about a dystopian future where humans stop evolving and in fact the children that are born are actually devolving um, and that's a problem because our main character is four months pregnant pregnant so over the two of them this is the one that i really 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 want to read however i'm just confused because on goodreads this has like a three five and this has i think around a four so i'm confused i'll probably read this one but if i read it and i'm not liking it I'll read this one. And the next prompt is to read a middle grade. So actually, I don't read middle grade. I've only read one this year, I think. But when I was searching the library, um, they have Race to the Sun, which is a middle grade, written by Rebecca Rowanhorse, who I love. So all I know is that this is following a seventh grader who can see monsters, and then her father goes missing and leaves behind a note that says, run. Um, I don't know more than that, but I trust Rebecca Roanhorse, and I'm very excited to read this. And the last bookish challenge is to read the group book, which is Heartbeat Braves by Pamela Sanderson. And all I know is that it is a contemporary romance. I also appreciate that the Kindle is quite cheap for this. I think it's just a few dollars. So I will be getting to this, and I love a good romance. And the last challenge is to consume some non-bookish media. Um, about indigenous peoples. So I have two that I'm planning to do and they're both on Netflix. I apologize if you don't have Netflix, but um, that's what we have. So that's what I'm going to probably be doing. Um, the first one is called When Two Worlds Collide and is it is a documentary that takes a hard look at how indigenous peoples clashed violently with the Peruvian government over land and economics in the Amazon. So, so far the books that I've talked about have been indigenous peoples in Canada, America, and Australia. Um, so I think it would be good to get um, another country in the mix. And I don't know anything about indigenous peoples from Peru. And the second non-bookish media, which I will be consuming, um, is different episodes from the Tailed by Light series. So this is a documentary series where each one focuses on a different area on Earth. Um, it's kind of similar to Planet Earth, if you know that series. So in season one, there is a episode called Tribes, and it says, Art Wolf documents the world's cultures, including the Surma of Ethiopia and the Masked Mud Men and the Huli clans of Papua New Guinea, as well as the last two episodes of season three, which are called Preserving Indigenous Culture Part One and Part Two, um, follow Aboriginal people in Australia. So it says Dylan River continues a family tradition of filmmaking focused on the Aboriginal people of his native Australia with a tour of ancient rock art sites. Um, and then for part two, it says he journeys into Arnhem land where he participates in a welcoming ritual and films the customs and tribal life ways of the Yongwe people. So between those three episodes and then the full length documentary that is four different countries, so Australia, Ethiopia, Papua New Guinea, and Peru. Um, so I think that is a good range. The rest of the things on my TBR are not anything to do with Indigathon. They're kind of on the side. Um, one is The Constant Rabbit, <laughs> uh, which is a buddy read that I'm gonna read with a friend of mine in Australia who runs the Bookstagram Literary Supper, which is so cool. She makes meals that she finds in books and her cooking is amazing. So this follows uh, an anthropomorphic rabbit population in the UK. And it's talking a lot about class issues, but through giant people-like rabbits. So I think it should be very interesting to read. It sounds a little weird, which is exactly what piqued my interest, of course. And the last three books on this list are all ones that I'm going to read for a mini burst of recommendations for Scorpios. So if you don't know, my birthday is November 11th, so it's 11-11, and yes, I'm a Scorpio. 
and I did some research and I watched a bunch of videos and one of the ones that was most recommended was American Psycho by Brett Easton Ellis. I will be buddy reading this with Tall. Again, I will leave her bookstagram down below. This one I don't think I need to explain. It's a classic. I've only seen the movie. Um, I haven't heard anything about the book or how it stacks up, so I'm very excited to get to this. Um, another recommendation was Gone Girl. This was the one that was most recommended over everything. I've seen the film, but it was a while ago, so I feel like it's been enough time that I won't see all of the twists coming. And the last one is The Scorpio Races by Maggie Steve Otter. I've actually never read a Maggie Steve Otter, and I don't know anything about this other than that people race horses through the tide, through the water. Is that true? So it is actually perfect for November because it says it is the first day of November and so today someone will die. So I assume the races take place on November 1st and you know the election is November 3rd and this is the first so I feel like the timing for being very high stakes and a race very fitting, all I'm gonna say. So I'm very intrigued to see if these Scorpio recommendations actually work for me. Um, so yeah, look out for that mini burst coming sometime. Thank you so much for watching. If you have made it this far, then please leave me, I guess, a horse emoji down below. I'm not a huge horse person. I'm actually allergic to hay, which makes it really hard to be near horses. But, um, you know, this book demands it. So um, please leave that emoji and I will send you lots of love down below. Also, please, please, please let me know what you are reading for Indigathon or if you have other Scorpio recommendations, I would love to hear them. So I will chat to you down below. Love you lots. Bye.